Well folks, have I had a brilliant day today. I've come for the title Trent here at Lauderton. I've got a feeder masters match this weekend, so I've come for a sneaky practice. And I've had a brilliant day. I've caught loads and loads of fish, loads and loads of silver bream. I've had some nice bream as well. Some stunning roach. I mean, let's see if I can pick one of the roach out that I've had. All on feeder gear. And I must have, I mean, there's easy 25, 30 pound there. Let's pick a roach out. Clonking fish, I mean, look at that. Beautiful roach, pound a piece, bream. Absolutely stunning day. 25, 30 pound in there, I reckon. Let me put these fish back and I'll show you the kit I've used and how I've caught these fish. So then let's talk about the day. Obviously, I've come with the idea of feeder fishing only today. I've got that match at the weekend I want to practice for, and it's a feeder match, so there's no point me fishing a float, anything like that. And when I arrived at the river this morning, it was absolutely raging. So there's no chance I was going to get a float out of the bag anyway, even if I could. We've had loads of rain recently. The tides are high at the moment, and you know you can see from a lot of the video that I've shot, I'm actually sitting halfway up the bank in the nettles and you know, I, I visit this venue sort of like three, four times a year and I've never seen it that high before. So it was feeder only and to be fair, I was thinking, am I going to hold with the feeders I've got? But I found a nice peg, it's reasonably steady and I've been able to hold with sort of 60 gram, two ounces of lead, which when people talk about the tidal trend, a lot of the time they're talking about big fish, barbel, bream, massive feeders, really big hooks, strong line. But I think you can see from the net of fish that I've had, if you scale everything down a little bit, you know, work really hard, scale your hooks and line down, scale your feeder size down, you can have a really nice day and catch some really nice fish. And obviously in a match situation, 20 odd pound, 25 pound like I've had today, it's gonna to be there or thereabouts, I would have thought. So let's start the business end. I've used 016 low vis, I've used a size 14 hook, and it's quite a medium wire hook. It's not a heavy gauged hook, it's a medium wire hook. And I think that's important for hooking your fish because we're trying to get the fish to hook themselves against the weight of the feeder today. So a really sort of sharp, fine-ish kind of hook helps with that. The length of the hook length is really important. So I've started to down a 90 centimetre hook length. That's just enough to nice fall of the bait, gets it away from the feeder. And that's really good for just getting bites. But I've got no problem with shortening that down to maybe 50 centimetres if I'm missing bites. Shorter hook length usually, especially when you're catching smaller fish, is better for hitting your bites. Then we go up to the main line. Main line today is 10 pound. I've used MTech main line, really robust. 10 pound, it might hook the old barbel today. You know, and it's going to take a bit of hammer, there's some, some shelves here and things like that. So I don't want to run the risk of cracking off because we're casting every feeders or, you know, maybe losing a big fish if a big fish did come along. So £10 main line. The rig itself is my standard sort of running rig, twizzled boom that's about three inch long, two slot shot to act as a buffer, and then just a snap link on the main line. That runs on the main line. Running rig works, you know, it works fine here. The feeder itself is a really small four square Nisa feeder, it's a little cage feeder. Now some people use solid feeders on the, on the river, some people use cage, I like to use a cage. And if I want to get my ground bait down, you know, right down to the bottom with nothing coming off, what I'll do is I'll work my ground bait so I'll make it a little bit claggier um, and I'll ram it in the feeder a little bit harder. And actually with a cage you can still reel back with all the bait in the feeder if you ram it in that hard. So not really a need for a solid feeder in my mind. The rod I'm using today is a Free Spirit. It's a high S model, really nice rod, and it's 13 foot special. It's got quite a nice through action. Again, we're fishing for sort of fish averaging sort of eight ounce, a pound, pound and a half maybe. And we actually want the rod to bend because that's gonna help us hook the fish. That spring back of a drop back bite is gonna help you hook the fish. So a nice through action rod is a must in my eyes. The reel is a Daiwa Castazon, workhorse reel, beautiful reel for this sort of thing, heavy duty fishing. Let's talk about the baits I've used today. So I've brought with me two bags of ground bait, a bag of frenzied hemp, and a bag of Bream Original. I've mixed them together, so I've got a 50-50 mix of the two. The Bream Original's there because it creates a bit of a stiffer mix. It's a little bit heavier than the frenzied hemp seed. And if I need to wedge a bit of ground bait in the feeder, you know, get some bait down to the bottom, that Bream Original's brilliant for that. And also, as the name suggests, Bream original, we're trying to target a few breams today, so you know it's worked really well. The other baits that I brought with me are some casters, 
hemp seed, maggots. I bought some worms with me also. Now this river in particular really responds well to hemp seed and castors. So it's been no surprise to me that I've run out of hemp seed and I've run out of castors as, as bait. I've actually been putting sort of like between 10 and 20 castors and probably the similar number of grains of hemp seed in each feeder full, really putting quite a few particles through the feeder today. Hook bait wise, I've caught loads of fish on castor, I've caught loads of fish on double maggot, tiny bits of worms been really good when I've been struggling to miss bites, always feel that fish hang on to a little bit of worm a little bit better so you know you, you don't miss as many bites and they've been really good for singling out those silver bream. Now a lot of people find feeder fishing on a river, especially a really powerful river, a little bit daunting but if you get a few basics right it's really easy. So. First of all, you want your rod rest up in the air. You want it pointing downstream and you want it up in the air. That's to get as much line out of the water as possible. Second of all, you need a nice butt rest. Everything needs to be nice and stable. And where you cast is quite important. So what I like to do is I like to cast straight out in front of me, maybe even slightly upstream if you can. And that way the feeder will land straight in front of you. Because I like to fish to a clip, not everyone does, but I like, to, I like the accuracy that a clip gives you. I need to end my cast with the rod sort of like two, three meters behind me. That way when the feeder hits the bottom, I've got that two or three meters of spare line that once I've put the rod on the rest, can form a bow in the water. The flow will take that spare line, take it downstream and it'll form a bow. And the pressure on that line is gonna help you hook the fish. A fish will take the bait, dislodge the feeder, your rod will have a massive bend in it, your tip will spring back and just start shaking. You know, and it's as simple as that. And all you've got to do then is reel the fish in. So there you go, feeder fishing on a big river. It's not all about catching double figure barbel and massive nets of bream. Those days are once in a blue moon, but by scaling everything down, being busy, swapping, changing hook baits, swapping your tail length, you know, you can have a really good day. And I'll tell you what, I'll take that net of fish that I've just put back this weekend in that match.